intake of food you know plants require food for their growth human beings animals require food for their growth everybody requires food for their growth but plants sometimes plants make their own food but sometimes plants also depends on others for their food whereas we human beings and animals cannot prepare their own food they have to depend on plants only for food all the animals depends on plants for food and then human beings depend both on plants and animals for their food human beings some are vegetarian some are non vegetarians so vegetarians depend on plants for their food whereas non vegetarians depend on animals also for their food when you talk about nutrition it is always about intake of food then coming to plants nutrition in plants why is nutrition essential in the plants plants require food for the purpose of growth energy then reproduction metabolism tissue repair and everything for everything plants require food what is the difference basic difference between uh, non living things and living things non living things do not have any life processes whereas living things have life processes non living things do not require any food whereas living things require food whereas suppose taking the example of elephant when the elephant is breathing respiration life process is going on when the elephant is taking food digestion process is going on then when there is also transportation process where blood will be flowing then there will be excretion process then there will be control and coordination suppose if you touch any hot or extreme hot food immediately you move your hand back why because your mind sends signals to your hand to remove your hand back so there is always control and coordination with the help of your brain so all these things are life processes which occur only in the living organisms whereas these do not occur in the non living organisms so what are the various components of food we eat carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins and minerals all these are the components of the food and what are the sources of these components carbohydrates are achieved from rice fats are achieved from oils proteins vitamins and minerals are achieved from many spices fruits and vegetables when we eat all these we get all these nutrients but whereas plants plants usually make their own food most of the plants make their own food so that is why they are known as autotroph capable of making their own food whereas own food whereas some plants they depend on other organisms for their food such plants are known as heterotrophs so how do these living organisms get food human beings and animals depend on plants for their food and these plants synthesize their own food they make their own food so how this food is made what is the mode of nutrition in the plants these plants use the raw materials from the surroundings like water carbon dioxide and minerals they use it from the air and water and then they make their own food so how does this nutrients help the plant they help them to grow they help in repair of the cells they provide the energy for all the life processes even plants also breathe plants also excrete there is reproduction in plants both sexual and asexual which will be dealing further so for all these processes nutrients are required even for the plants so how do these nutrients come from the food how the food is prepared by the plant sometimes by itself sometimes it depends on others so always food is prepared by the plants with the help of in the presence of sunlight so sunlight water is very essential for the plants to prepare their food then what is nutrition nutrition is nothing but the mode of taking food by an organism and its utilization for the body so how it is taking the food with the help of sunlight with water some nutrients and then how it is utilizing for its growth purpose for reproduction purpose for bearing fruits seeds for the purpose of respiration for its growth for everything it plants require nutrients and the nutrition is going on so nutrition is mainly two types autotrophic and heterotrophic autotrophic nutrition means plants can prepare their own food with the help of sunlight how with the help of a pigment called chlorophyll there is always a pigment called chlorophyll that gives the exclusive greenish color to the plants so plants take their nutrition by sunlight so that is why they are known as autotrophs which can prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight that process is known as photosynthesis then what is heterotrophic nutrition nutrition in heterotrophic nutrition plants do not make their own food they depend on other organisms on other hosts or any other organism for 
their food that is heterotrophic nutrition then all these photosynthetic activities carried out in the cells of the plants so you know plants are made up of cells completely so these cells are enclosed by a cell membrane so plants are usually made up of cells the cells have cell membrane nucleus cell wall and it also has guard cells or stomata all these cells help in breathing and making food processes the guard cells are guarded by small small opening called stomata they are on the surface of the leaves there are small small pores known as stomata all these things help in the making of the food and breathing of the plant so cells are enclosed by cell membrane and they have nucleus surrounded by cytoplasm and guard cells or stomata are present on the surface of the leaf on the surface of any green leaf there are small pore like structures which can be seen only under microscope they are called guard cells or stomata these helps in breathing of the leaf if they are not there the plants will eventually die because these are the only cells which help in breathing of the plants that is called transpiration process of the plants so in this chapter we will be knowing how photosynthesis is done by the plants and then what are the food factories of plants the food factories of the plants are the places where food is getting manufactured by the plant those are leaves stems branches and we will also be knowing some other types of nutrition like saprophytic nutrition and parasitic nutrition and there is also something called symbiotic relationship in the plants we will be also knowing about this so in the modes of nutrition of plants first we will be dealing about autotrophic nutrition where plants can make their own food in that the process of plants making their own food is carried out by photosynthesis photo means light synthesis means combined so these light with the help of combination of sunlight and water and a photosynthesis occurs so photosynthesis is the food making process of the plants so leaves leaves are known as the food factories of the plants where synthesis of the food that means preparation of the food takes place here in the leaves other than leaves preparation of food also takes place in the green stems green branches of the leaf of the plants so leaves are known as the food factories of the plants and other than leaves photosynthesis also occurs in the green stems and green branches of the plants so these are known as the food factories of the plants then sunlight is getting we get sunlight from the atmosphere then where do we get water we irrigate the plant for the water purpose then water what does water supply to the soil water supplies minerals to the soil so these minerals are absorbed from by the water in the soil and goes to the leaves in these leaves water is absorbed from the soil so when you water the soil when you irrigate the soil from in the form of water you also supply some nutrients or minerals to the soil then these from the soil the water is transported to the leaves how with the help of few vessels those vessels are known as xylem and phloem which you will be dealing in further classes so in from the form of vessels the water is supplied from the soil to the other parts of the plant like leaves branches stems etc so water and minerals are absorbed from the soil and then they are transported to the leaves with the help of few vessel like structures known as xylem or phloem then carbon dioxide is taken out from the air with the help of guard cells or stomata cells all the plants are made up of cells the cells have many structures from those structures there are few structures known as guard cells or stomata which are present on the surface of the leaves from those parts carbon dioxide is taken out with the help of air carbon dioxide is taken from the air with the help of guard cells on stomata and this carbon dioxide also helps in the process of photosynthesis other than that the carbon dioxide also helps in the respiration process known as transpiration in the plant the water and minerals are transported to the leaves with the help of vessel like structures so from the soil when we water the soil the water contains some nutrients minerals these nutrients are transported to the other parts of the plant from the soil now with the help of vessel like structures known as xylem phloem and some tracheids and all those which you will be dealing in the further classes so what is the process of photosynthesis leaves have a greenish pigment like structure called chlorophyll that gives the unique green color to the plants then this chlorophyll what does chlorophyll helps to capture the sunlight energy from the sunlight leaves have a greenish pigment like structure called chlorophyll this chlorophyll helps to capture the light from the sun that means energy from the sun and this solar energy is stored in the form of food in the plant in future 
So chlorophyll, the green pigment called chlorophyll captures the sunlight and then this sunlight is stored in the form of energy. So this solar energy, sunlight energy means here I mean solar energy. Solar energy present in the atmosphere around is captured with the help of a pigment called chlorophyll. Then what next happens? This captured solar energy is used to prepare food from carbon dioxide and water. So with the help of cells, carbon dioxide, water and solar energy, the plant prepares its food. And this solar energy is later stored in the form of food only. So mainly what here we understand is sunlight is the source of food for these living organisms plants. Sunlight provides source of food for these living organisms. Chlorophyll, the green pigment present in the leaves, absorbs the light energy, solar energy and stores it in the form of food. Then this energy is used to prepare food with the help of carbon dioxide and water. Then in this process of photosynthesis, oxygen is always evolved. Thereby plants inhale carbon dioxide and release oxygen, right? So that is why oxygen is also evolved in the process of photosynthesis. Oxygen is also evolved in the process of respiration as well as photosynthesis. So this total process of making food is known as photosynthesis. Chlorophyll capturing solar energy and this energy get used to prepare is being used for preparing food with the help of carbon dioxide and water from the air. Carbon dioxide you get from the air and water from the soil. So and then oxygen is evolved during this process of photosynthesis. So chlorophyll containing cells and also carbon dioxide from the air and water. Chlorophyll containing green pigment containing cells, carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil, all these together in the presence of sunlight combine to give away carbohydrate and oxygen. This is known as the reaction of photosynthesis. This is called the photosynthetic equation or reaction. Chlorophyll containing cells along with carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil combine in the presence of sunlight to produce carbohydrates and oxygen. Carbohydrate is nothing but starch that gives the energy to the plant. It is stored in the plant in the form of solar energy and also oxygen is evolved in this process. So this is the car this is the photosynthetic reaction. Then all this process is done only for the production of carbohydrates. Whereas there are many components of food, right? There are many components of nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, lipids, so proteins. So all this reaction is only for the production of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is also known as starch. This gives the energy to the plant. Then moving on to fat, fats and proteins. How fats and proteins are synthesized? Proteins are usually made up of nitrogenous substance. There is a lot of nitrogen present in the air, but these plants cannot directly take those nitrogen from the air. It needs to be converted into some other form to be absorbed by the plant. So this protein and fat synthesis, the preparation of proteins and fats by the plant is done how? Proteins are nitrogenous substances. Then soil converts this nitrogen from the air. Nitrogen present in the air is taken up by the soil. So soil converts gaseous nitrogen into usable forms like inert forms it converts. That process is called nitrification. So with the help of process called nitrification, the gaseous nitrogen is converted to the inert nitrogen or ammonia or other forms of nitrogen and then it is used by the soil. So and then it is released into the soil. So soil converts gaseous nitrogen into inert usable forms and releases into the soil. So the atmospheric nitrogen which is present in the soil, air cannot be directly used by the plants. It will be absorbed by the soil and then it will be converted into some other inert forms like nitrogen, ammonia or other forms. These processes are known as nitrification. So this atmospheric nitrogen will be converted into other usable, other usable forms and then taken up by the soil. Other than this, there are also some nitrogen fixing bacteria called rhizobium which fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and convert it into another forms and supply to the plants for the process of protein and fat synthesis. And these nitrogen fixing bacteria, rhizobium, are usually present in the leguminous plants. Leguminous plants means the fruit or the seed of the plant is used as food purpose. Leguminous plants means the food, fruit, the fruit or seed of the plant is used for food purpose. Those are leguminous plants. For example, groundnut. Groundnut grows in the root part, right? That means the root part, the seed, 
or the root is used as for purpose of food we consume groundnut so that are leguminous plants other examples of leguminous plants are peas green peas what you eat they are all dicotyledons that means seeded plants leguminous plants so nitrogen fixing bacteria help to convert the atmospheric nitrogen to other inert forms and then they are further utilized by the plants for the synthesis of proteins and fats